Hi, my friends. Hi, singers. Hi, vocal teachers. Thank you for watching my video today. Um, today, I'm going to talk about leaning on the voice for opera singers. Yeah. So um, probably you heard about the, the, this thing, leaning on the voice on something. I'm going to tell you today where you're going to lean on your voice what is actually happening in your throat while you're leaning on and how can you combine it or connect it with uh, the appoggio, okay? So let's start by saying uh, leaning on the voice. Yeah, Leaning comes uh, from, from the Italian, uh, actually the Italians uh, say appoggiare, which is leaning. And uh, many of you probably think appoggiare is somewhere here in the uh, in a, a more lower part of your body. But today I'm going to tell you where I think the leaning on is really, and it works really well. So let me let me start with that. Leaning on the voice means also focusing the voice. Okay. So if you're looking for something to focus your voice then it's the same like leaning on the voice, on something. Where are we leaning on our voices or our voice? I am leaning on my voice on my sternum. That's a very big bone and bone means resonation. And it's actually very close to the vocal cords. So I feel a lot of resonances there, okay? You probably heard in your past, or you're hearing it right now, that you need to lean it on the air itself, or on the body, or on the forehead, or on the neck. I'm sure you heard of appoggiare with these different uh, body parts, connected with these different body parts, but I tried all of them, and none of them worked for years. So, once I, try, uh, once I uh, started to lean my voice on my sternum, on my spine in German on the chest bone, I immediately, immediately, not two weeks later or months later, felt that my voice is leaning on against something. Okay, so you, you probably use also the word leaning it against the wall, you know, so a leaning on the voice means having control of the voice, um, having less intonation problems, and uh, of course, enjoy, it's more uh, enjoyable singing. The audience will enjoy it more because you have no intonation problems. You don't have a big vibrato when you uh, lean on your voice. And so what is actually happening when you're leaning on your voice? Anatomically, scientifically, what is happening? I tell you, when you lean on your voice on something, when you lean on your voice on your sternum, for example, your vocal cords start to close. They're sitting here. And when you give them a focus, when you lean them, lean them on on something, then your vocal cords will suddenly close better, much more than before. That's what's really happening anatomically when you have the feeling that you're leaning on your voice on something. So your vocal cords are closing more are closed more. Of course not totally closed because they still need to be open to let little air pass by, which is coming from the lungs, right? After you breathe in. So vocal cord closure is something very, very important. And in order to get a very good vocal cord closure, you need to lean on your voice. And I'm telling you, please lean on your voice on your chest bone. It will give you immediate comfort. Uh, after a while, you will have the uh, feeling that you are totally in control of your voice. You will uh, be more, you will be very good in your intonation. Your vibrato will, uh, f will be homogenic, we will not have uh, different kinds of vibratos anymore. You will have less vibrato, which is not bad. Yeah. If you find a good balance between singing straight and a little vibrato and uh, you will have focus in your voice. OK, that's what we are all looking for. So uh, I, I just told you that uh, it actually closes your vocal cords right here. Now, if you start doing this, choose
a point on your chest bone. It's not so high. It's not high up here. This is too high. And it's not low here. No, this is too low. You're going to find it yourself. No, no big secret. No big thing. You will find one spot. Okay, not the whole entire place. No, this is too spread. One point that you're going to focus your voice into this one point, but your full voice, your whole full voice, you put into it, that spot, into the sternum. Sing against your sternum and never lose contact to the sternum. From the lowest note you have to the highest range. Yeah, uh, I think I showed you guys a picture of Lily Lehman's book where she uh, puts uh, the spot here, right at the chest bone, and then she draws uh, the different notes and the range above to the highest range. She, uh, she wants she wants to be she wants them to be connected with the chest bone. Okay, so put every note into your chest bone, and then the following, and then the following, and then, okay. So uh, never lose contact to the chest bone, because. I am convinced about that fact, 100%, that if you want to connect your voice with your body, then it's over the chest bone, not below, not here. That is too disconnected. Connect your voice with your body, with the chest bone, over the chest bone. That's the bridge. To connect voice and body with each other. The bridge for connecting voice and body with each other is the chest bone. Sing over the chest bone and then you will get into your body. You will connect your voice with your body. 100%. Um, now let me tell you one other thing. Very important. Once you get, that, get this point and once you start singing against your chest bone all the time, you will have the feeling of a pressure here, uh, especially when you go up the range, okay? That is okay. That please, congratulate yourself, congratulate, congratulate yourself to that because that means that your vocal cords finally close better or more. That pressure means the following, I tell you. The pre when you feel a pressure here once you sing, that's what's happening. In your vo vocal cords, they are trying to close, right? They are trying to close once you're leaning on your voice. But the air which comes from your lungs wants to go through your very good closed vocal cords. And because they're very good closed, they, it, you will feel a slight pressure under your vocal cords. And that is actually the pressure you're feeling here, yeah? The pressure is that the vocal cords are saying, no, 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 no. My brain told me that I'm not allowed to open up my vocal cords so, uh, so much because I want to create nice sound because I want not to have intonations problems. That's why I'm going to be closed. And the air says, okay, then I, uh, then I have to go there little by little. And that's the pressure you're going to feel in the beginning phase when you especially go up because going singing up, singing a higher range means more air and more air pressuring above the vo good vocal, good closed vocal cords. That's the pressure you're going to feel. So once you're singing uh, against your sin, once you feel a pressure, accept it. Don't be scared of that pressure. This will not stay forever. Yeah. But this is the a feedback of your vocal cords that they are closing. Okay. And that's very good. Just keep on working. Keep on going and accept that something is happening, some pressure is happening somewhere, but that's normal. We are working with so many muscle groups. Why should we feel so relaxed? No, there is no 100% relaxation in singing. Your body is working for you, okay? So let this slight pressure happen on your chest bone once you're singing against it all the time. Uh, to the professional singers, when you are having rehearsals or when you're on stage, and you're trying to do this technique, just tell yourself, sing against your chest bone, sing against your chest bone, sing against your Brust, uh, Brustbein in German, yeah? And the more you tell yourself that you have to do this, the more it will happen and the more comfort you will get. 
the more control of your voice will get, the more, the less intonation problem and the more focus in your voice. Okay. And that's what we want, right? Singers. We want more, uh, comfort and more control of our voice. Okay. We need to control our voice. When we need, when we go to auditions, we cannot play Russian roulette. We have to have the control hundred percent. And the one thing I'm telling my students and myself when I'm singing is one thing, sing against your chest bone, sing against your sternum, sing against your Brustbein in German. Okay. And that is one thing your brain has to process. Not so many things like, where is my tongue? What is my tongue doing? Where is my mask? Where is my rib? Where are my ribs? What is my apojo doing? What is going over the head? And what is my nose doing? Forget all about this multitasking things. You cannot do that. That is impossible to go on stage to perform and to think about all these things. No. So think about one thing only. And that is doable for your brain. And that is... Sing against your chest bone all the time. Okay, let's go now to, to another important point. How can I connect this leaning on, on the chest bone, with apoggio? Hmm, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> this is very easy thing, very short. Okay, once you do, once you close your vocal cords, by leaning on your voice, on your chest bone, your appoggio is going to happen automatically. Why? I tell you. It's physics, physique in German. You take a balloon, yeah, Luftballon. You blow in the balloon air, okay? Once you have a lot of air in your balloon, you fix it. You don't let the air come out anymore. And then you do you open it up a little bit, just a little passage, and then you will create sound. Right? And that's the same with our body. If you breathe in, if you put air into your body, and then you close your body with your vocal cords, okay? And then you only open up a slight passage for your air to pass through little by little, then you can create nice sounds. Then you can create so you, you can sing wonderful with the control of your voice, but if your vocal cords are too open and too much air passes by, you cannot create them anymore. It's like with the balloon. The balloon, when you open up the top of it too much, no sound will come out, okay? Plus, not only the vocal cord closure is important. Once, when you breathe in, Put some air into your body and then you close your body with the vocal cords. What will happen above it, above in your body? The whole air you just breathed in will create a, a pressure, an air pressure in your body because you're not letting it come out because you're closing your vocal cords and you're closing or and you if you open your vocal cords for singing, you're just letting a little passage for the air to come out. So the air pressure is still there, even though a little uh, air is uh, ent uh, entering out of your body, but the air pressure is still there. And that air pressure, which is in your body because of the closed vocal cords, is creating an automatic apojo. It is like that. It is pulling your muscle groups together, that air pressure in your body. But it's very important when you breathed in, after breathing in, to close the, uh, the, the vocal cords immediately, to not let this air pressure collapse. Because if, if you open it up too much for the first note, too much air comes out and the air pressure in your body will collapse and no apoggio will be created. You know, uh, there are people who are a, like uh, have a really loud speaking voice. Do you know that? Like my husband, he has a very loud speaking voice. And I always wonder like, how can he have such a, like my ears are ringing when he's talking, yeah? And I was thinking myself, why is it like that? He never uh, heard anything about Apojo and he's not doing any vocal technique. Why is his speaking voice so loud? Or why are some people 
laughing so loud or why are dogs barking for hours or why are babies crying for hours? The answer of that is because they're closing their vocal cords by nature. That's an instinct. And because they're closing their vocal cords, this air pressure in your body creates an automatic apoggio for them. And that's why they have such a loud voice because the vocal cords are closing. And if you close your vocal cords, you will have a louder voice. You will have a better voice. You will have a clear voice and not a breathy voice. Yeah, breathy and weak voices come from less vocal cord closure. So the people who have a, a small voice, but they think they have a bigger one, they probably need to work on the vocal cord closure. They need to lean on their voice on the chest bone. Now, dear coloratura sopranos, some of you wrote me. Um, they're, they want to improve, they want to make their middle range bigger. They want to make their low range bigger. And they're asking me, how can I do that? Put your middle range, yeah, into your, sing against your sternum, in the whole middle range. And once you come to the low part, you will go into your chest voice anyway. But before you come to the chest voice, you need to put your voice more into your uh, sternum, into your chest voice, I yeah, don't no, chest bone, okay? That way, your voice will get a little more chest voice quality. It will mix up with your head voice and create a nice middle range. Okay? That is very important for high voices or for high tenors. Yeah? If you want to improve, make your middle range better, put your voice against your sternum and sing against your breastbone. Okay? Sing against your chest bone in your middle range. Slowly by slowly, 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 you will get a fuller middle range and a better transition to the low range. Okay? Once you have a big break between middle range and low and chest voice, then your uh, middle range was not enough put into your chest bone. Then you have to lean it on even more. Okay? Then you will have no not such a big break between middle range and chest voice, okay? So you need to go into your chest voice earlier, but not full chest voice, you need to mix it. And how can you mix it? When you lean on your voice against your chest bone, okay? Um, I'm not sure if I told everything, so I'm gonna do a quick summary. Um, you probably heard your whole life, learn apoggio first, and then you will have supported singing, right? That's what you heard probably your whole life. I'm telling you the opposite. Lean to do a good, ah, sorry, learn to do a good vocal cord closure by leaning on your voice on your chest bone the whole time. Then your apoggio will happen for you automatically. You don't have to even think about it. The only thing you have to think about it while you're singing or before singing is when, when I breathed in, after breathing in, I need to right away lean my voice into my chest bone. That's it. Breathing in, leaning into the chest bone, uh, bone the voice. That's it. Not losing any second, not losing any air in between. Okay? That's, that's it. If you want to connect your voice with your body, the bridge is your sternum. Many singers were doing that automatically, like Gena Dimitrova. You can hear it. You can hear her, her glottis. Glottis is not very good, uh, good, but you can hear that she's very breasty. And breasty tones in your middle range and a high range means that she's she actually automatically leaned on her voice on your on her chest bone, probably not even knowing it. But my first Russian teacher actually told me that she says she, she was always telling me, and I was too young to understand, sing with your breast, sing with your breast. She actually meant sing against your chest bone. But I didn't understand 
She said always, breast, breast, breast. And I didn't understand that. I was too young. Later, I met an Italian teacher who was one of the students of Del Monaco. And he taught me about the vocal cord closure. He said, put them together, put them together, put them together. He didn't tell me about leaning on the voice on the sternum, which would be the easier way to put them together. He was doing it right away here, like Del Monaco was doing it. That is something not everybody can live with. That is a kind of, here is kind of strangling. And uh, it's not a very easy going way. I tell you that. Probably it works for somebody. But for me, it was a too high position to think of my onset. So I moved it down here. Yeah. Um, what can I tell you else? If you have any questions, by the way, <clears throat> you can ask me or you can, if you want, have a lesson with me and I'm going to go into details how you can reach it. And one thing I want to also give to you as a trick tip when you want to practice that use a lot of M and NG mm, mm, when you practice. So mm, ah, or mm, ah, me, mom, why? Because M is have a, has a natural vocal cord closure. The same with NG. Mm, mm, they close the vocal cords very close, but don't do it, the M anywhere in the sky or the NG anywhere in the sky. That's what all students are always concerned of. Where is my M? Where should I feel it? You put your M into your sternum. Mm, lean it on your sternum. Mm, mm, lean it on your sternum that M and then NG okay and then from there you open it up to me for example yeah uh, and then you go me me ma mu and all these things and I can tell you that probably in a lesson from 101 lesson okay so uh, let me hear about your feedback Probably there will be people who will say that's nonsense or that is crazy what she's telling you guys. That's okay for me. It worked for me. It worked for my students. And it works for some people who are on stages, on international stages as well. So probably it works for you too. Have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.